the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Lord, we pray that the fruit of your Spirit may grow in us. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, we pray that the fruit of your Spirit may grow in us. The fruit of the Spirit is a gift from God. Lord, we We pray pray that that you help us to cultivate and harvest these fruits in our lives for for your glory. glory. Amen. My name is Maxine Effenheim. I'm treasurer at Advent Lutheran Church. I am thankful for my family, and I am thankful for my extended family at Advent. Very cheerful, friendly, and generous people. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Hi, I'm Jim Button. And I'm Judy Button. We're from Grace Lutheran Church in Thienesville. We have so much to be grateful for, especially in this time. Our health would be number one, but I think we agree it would be our grandchildren. Children, definitely our our grandchildren. We are blessed with how many? We forgot. A lot. (laughs) But yeah, no, they're all doing great, and we love them so much. Jacora and I'm a member at St. John's and I'm thankful for my friends and family. Our theme verse for this Thanksgiving service comes from Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. This year for our joint Thanksgiving service, we are spending some time reflecting on the fruits of the Spirit. I'm Pastor Alexis Twido, the pastor at Advent, and I welcome you to this Thanksgiving service as we reflect on these spiritual fruits. Perhaps the fruits of the Spirit passage from Galatians is a favorite of yours. 
It is for me. And I think it is so fitting for us to reflect on it at this time of year during the Thanksgiving season. I mean, what better way to show our gratitude and thanks to God than by harvesting the fruits of the Spirit in our lives? These gifts of the Holy Spirit are freely given to us. And this holiday season, perhaps we can all be blessed to harvest them more intentionally in our lives for the sake of our neighbor and for the sake of the world that God made. This evening, I'm going to speak to you about harvesting love and joy. First, and perhaps most naturally, Paul reminds us that the Holy Spirit helps us to love. It is the first gift fruit of the Spirit that he names. And that, I believe, love is what gratitude really is at uh, the heart, is really about at the heart. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 19 to 21, we read, We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars, For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. God loved us, loves us, and out of deep thankfulness for that love, we in return Put that love back out into the world. It's that simple. Simple, but not always easy. Which is why it is a fruit of the Spirit. Because sometimes it's hard to love, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to make ourselves vulnerable and open our heart to others. Sometimes we have so much hurt or anger in us that prevents us from loving. Sometimes the differences that we see cloud our ability to reach out in love. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to intervene. The Holy Spirit works in us, on us, through us, so that we can do what otherwise on our own we could not. The Spirit intercedes. And when the Spirit intercedes, seeds are planted. And what grows from those seeds, the evidence of the Spirit at work in us, are the fruits of the Spirit. And these fruits must be nurtured, cultivated, tended, so that they can grow, so that they can ultimately be harvested and enjoyed. With the help of the Holy Spirit, love grows, and so too does joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, it's important to understand that joy is what grows, not happiness. Happiness is wonderful. It is a reaction to things in our lives. It is a feeling, a wonderful feeling. But joy, joy is something different. In the Bible, joy is an inner gladness, a deep-seated pleasure. It is a depth of assurance and confidence that ignites a cheerful and hopeful heart. And in particular, for us as people of faith, joy is the deep down sense of well-being that abides in the heart of a person who knows that the Lord is the source of all goodness and hope. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And like love, 
Joy must be tended, nurtured, and cultivated because joy doesn't come easily either. We all know that there are things in life that seek to steal our joy. Illness, injury, insult, fear, hate, and worry, poverty, racism, climate change, unemployment, addiction, depression. Often there are so many things that weigh us down that it's hard to find gladness, hard to find reasons to rejoice except that we know and believe that God is good and faithful. Amen? And so in the midst of our challenges, we look to the Holy Spirit to help us so that in its truest expression, joy can ultimately transform difficult times into blessings and turn heartache into gratitude. Joy brings meaning to life. It brings life to life. Perhaps then there's no better time to start to cultivate more joy in your life than now to find confidence and comfort in your faith so that your heart can be full and glad and so that you can live in hope. That is joy and it is my hope and my prayer for you this holiday. The Spirit intercedes, planting in us that which will grow into the blessed fruit as we live in community. The fruits of the Spirit are love and joy. And my fellow pastors will share with you the other fruits of the Spirit. We will hear about harvesting peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let it be so, we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Alexa. I'm a member from Advent, and I'm thankful for our sports. Okay, I'm uh, Edgar Yiddis. I'm a member of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Cedar River, Wisconsin. Uh, thankful to be able to get together with family. Uh, and get together on Thanksgiving Day. And also, I guess, my health is our thing to be thankful for.
Thanksgiving worship, our collective uh, worship service. Uh, I'm Pastor Jim O'Reilly Christensen, and I'm sharing thoughts on peace and patience, harvesting the fruits of the Spirit. First reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 6. Reading from the Antioch Bible, which is uh, close to a translation of... Um, uh, Aramaic, as close as it comes to uh, the language of Jesus. Therefore, I, a prisoner for our Lord, entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling by which you have been called, in humility of mind, gentleness, and patience. Be considerate of one another in love, and strive to keep the unity of the Spirit in the peace that binds you together, so that you may become one body and one spirit, even as you are all called with the one hope of your calling. For there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And there is one God, the Father of everything, over all, through all, and in all of us. Here ends the reading. And the second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, just two verses. Jesus says on the night of his betrayal, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Some thoughts on peace and patience. Peace first from the Gospel. Peace sounds like a word or a concept that everybody can agree on. It's a good thing, right? but it's not as simple as it sounds. Peacemaking takes as much effort and commitment as building for war. And let's admit, shall we, that our society and other so-called civilized cultures support a very large and profitable war machine. Our Lord Christ counters the love for war that commits so much wealth and power toward destruction with a vision for peace. I love it that uh, Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the peacemakers, those who strive with great energy to do the work of making peace. They shall be called children of God. Yet peace, shalom, well-being, wholeness, that's the meaning of it, is always closely allied with justice. I like that term better than righteousness. And the slogan that points out the connection rings true. If there is no justice, there will be no peace. The Jesus who rules with all authority in heaven and on earth after his resurrection that God gives him tells us so. And he goes deeper. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not anyone's peace, my peace. I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. In other words, Jesus says, my peace, my shalom is greater than your own or the world's troubles. You have not conjured up a feeling of peace on your own, and the peace we share on Sunday mornings, if we do that yet, comes from God. So it doesn't matter, matter about what our demeanor is on a Sunday for sharing the peace, because it's the peace of Christ, his peace that he gives us. He says, I have given you a greater peace from beyond yourselves, from the Holy Spirit. Live in God's peace. And the other fruit of the Spirit is patience. We North Americans are not a very patient people. That's not any news for any of us. We are like the wild little boy Calvin in the Calvin and Hobbes cartoons, if you follow them. In one of these cartoons, Calvin looks up into the sky for God, and he says, God, give me patience, and I want it right now. That's us. I say it's better to consider patience in another way, as a fruit of the Spirit, needing our attention and our practice. David Allen writes, 
Patience is the calm acceptance that things can happen in a different order than the one you have, than the one you have in mind. We don't need to believe like Chicken Little in the fairy tale that the sky is falling when things seem out of whack, out of our own personal control. Are they ever in our personal control? I have five different weather apps on my phone, but I still can't control the weather. The world doesn't need to jump when we say jump. Patience as a fruit of the spirit helps us live with sanity. Another way to think of this gift is with a story. Uh, I like stories of the wise master there by a Catholic writer, Anthony DeMello. And uh, they're wonderful stories of various kinds. The wise master could be a rabbi, could be Jesus, could be a guru, anyone like that. But in, in this one, the disciples ask the master, are there ways of gauging one's spiritual strength? Many, said the master in reply. Give us one. Find out how often you become disturbed in the course of a single day, was his reply. St. Paul writes, walk in a manner worthy of the calling by which you have been called. In humility of mind, gentleness, and patience. Be considerate of one another in love and strive to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace that binds you together. If we manage to pull that off with the help of God's spirit, then we can truly live as thankful people. Amen. Hi, my name is Kara. I'm from Trinity and I'm grateful for Doctors of Mary. Hi, my name is Tom Golding. Uh, I'm a reconstructed member of Faith Lutheran Church, and uh, I'm also grateful to John for all the support and love that he's provided me for a long time. There are many things I've been grateful for the last year. I'm grateful for my friends who provided comfort and support through some really trying times. I'm grateful to my family for their, the joy and the love 
that they bring into my life on a regular basis. And I'm grateful for God for giving me the faith that allows me to continue to live. My name is Barbara Johnson and I'm a member here at Faith. This Thanksgiving, I am so thankful for my neighbors and all my friends in the community and especially here at the church who helped me so much after I fell in May and broke my kneecap. In the beginning, I was pretty incapacitated and had to rely on a lot of people. And later when I could do more, I still was pretty much housebound because I couldn't drive. So I'm so grateful to everyone who took me to appointments and helped me around the house. And, and I feel thankful for everyone surrounding me that helped me get through that ordeal. from St. John's and I'm thankful for friends and family. Hi, I'm Colleen Steffen. I'm at, I go to Emmanuel Lutheran Church and this year I am thankful for all of my church family who has helped me get through a really rough year. Hi friends, it's Pastor Vicki Simon of Emmanuel, and I'm here to talk to you today about the fruits of the Spirit that are loving kindness and generosity. A verse from Psalm 57, verse 10. For your steadfast loving kindness is as high as the heavens, O Lord. Your faithfulness extends to the clouds. I think within this is encompassed such a message of Christ's loving kindness for us and of God's generosity to us. It's so vast, isn't it? It tells us it's as vast as space, as high as the heavens. And when they speak of the heavens in the Bible, they are looking at the sky, out at the vastness. And when they are looking up at the clouds and thinking of God's generosity, they are thinking of them as being innumerable, just constantly passing through this vast space. 
so huge, so awesome, we almost can't believe it, is God's loving kindness for us and generosity to us. And we are called to dwell in, to marinate in, to know this loving kindness, to offer it to others, and to know that this is the beginning of generosity, to know deeply, to have received and affirmed what God has given to us, every gift, all those things we are counting with gratitude around our Thanksgiving tables this year. And to know that we have so much to offer. Our time, our talent, our treasure, yes, but ourselves. God deeply wishes to know us and for us to know that God's faithfulness to us, actually. God's generosity and love for us is as vast as the heavens, innumerable as the clouds in the sky. And we are called to offer that as well. So let's do that practice today with a loving kindness blessing in the name of Christ. We hear it first of all for ourselves. If we have trouble offering loving kindness to ourselves, imagine Jesus offering it to you or the most Christ-like person in your life. Is it a grandparent, a mentor, a friend, maybe even a pet who shows you that limitless, unconditional love is for you? Marinate in it, soak it in, No how much Christ loves you. Filled up with this knowledge, offer it generously to beloved one or ones. Maybe they're gathering around your table today, or maybe they're just close in heart this year. Offer it to neutral people who are neutral people, the ones that we pass at the grocery store and the quick trip, and maybe at church, we don't know them well. They could be in the background most of the time. Bring them to the foreground. Offer a prayer, generosity of loving kindness for them. Offer a prayer even for the difficult ones in our lives. We don't have to pick the hardest one. Is there somebody maybe who will be difficult around your Thanksgiving table? Ah, just say an extra prayer for them. Instead of leaning into our grudges, lean generously into God's love that is for them too. And widen your heart as vast and as limitless as the heavens, as the sky, and as innumerable as the clouds and offer that love and kindness in the name of Jesus for all beings everywhere with whom we are inseparably interconnected who want and need the same as we do. May we all be safe this Thanksgiving. May we be happy knowing that happiness only comes from living in Christ's love. May we be healthy Coming out of this pandemic, we hope, please keep us healthy this year. May we be at ease with whatever comes to us in life and remember God's faithfulness in the midst of even the hard things. May we know Christ's peace that passes all understanding, that this peace is for us and we are called this Thanksgiving again to declare it for all. God's blessings to you, dear friends, this Thanksgiving and always. Hi, my name is Ella. I'm from St. John's Lutheran Church, and I'm thankful for my family.
I'm Joby Brown. And I'm Trina Brown and Grace Lutheran Church. Here in Deansville. I'm thankful for uh, family and I'm also thankful for the nurses and the doctors and all the frontline workers that I have the privilege to work with. Likewise, I'm also thankful for health. I'm thankful for family and friends and uh, being able to have such a great congregation to come and worship at. Happy Thanksgiving. I am Pastor Bill Beyer. I am a pastor at Grace Lutheran Church in Thienesville, and it's a pleasure to be with you through these electronic means as we talk about harvesting the fruits of the Spirit. And the two fruits of the Spirit that I've been entrusted with are faithfulness and gentleness. So as we talk about faithfulness, I want to just share with you a passage from Lamentations chapter 3. God's favor is not exhausted nor has God's compassion failed. These rise anew each morning. So great is God's faithfulness. God is all I have, I cry, so I will wait in patience. Whenever I hear this passage read, I think back to when I was a little boy and my grandmother would sit down at the piano and play old hymns. And one of those hymns she used to play is the great old hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness reminding me of how faithful God is to us. And if we are faithful, if God is faithful to us, we can be faithful to God in the same way. Because God has given us that brilliant example of faithfulness by being with us through exile in Egypt and traveling through the desert, through the times of the prophets and the times of Jesus, through the struggles we've had as a people. God has always been faithful to us and we can be faithful to God in the same way. When I talk about faithfulness and being faithful, I was thinking the other day about going grocery shopping, and I, I bought a can of Green Giant Whole Kernel Sweet Corn. And you know what? I see the label, and I know that when I open this can, I am going to get Whole Kernel street, scre- Sweet Corn. I know for a fact that's what I'm going to get. I have faith that this label matches the inside of the can. And when it comes to faithfulness in our lives, we as the people of God are called to have as much faith in our life as we do in the Jolly Green Giant, trusting that God's promises are true and sure in our lives. As we harvest that fruit of the Spirit in our lives, let us make sure we give thanks to God for God's faithfulness to us and work to create a stronger faith in not only our God, but each other as the people of God. And the other uh, passage that I was uh, talk, uh, entrusted to talk about was gentleness. In the book of 2 Timothy, we read, And as a servant of Christ, you must not engage in quarrels. Instead, be gentle with everyone. A good teacher, patient and tolerant, Be gentle when you correct those who argue with you. Perhaps God will grant them repentance, the grace to recognize the truth, and they will come to their senses. Be gentle when you correct those who argue with you. A little over a year ago, I made one of the greatest decisions of my life, and that was getting off of Facebook. I couldn't take the negativity of Facebook anymore. I couldn't take the arguing and the bickering. I couldn't take the fact that people had stopped listening to each other, stopped talking with each other, and all they did was argue. We, as human beings, need to learn to be more gentle with each other. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they were talking about education in America. And they were talking about how if if somebody makes a comment or a statement, immediately they're told they're wrong and, and told to be quiet and sit down. And they said the educational system has to change. We have to allow people the opportunity to be wrong, to learn and to grow. We don't learn and grow if there isn't a sense of gentleness in our hearts and in our spirits. We, as the people of God, are called to reach out to each other in grace and in gentleness and walk with each other. Are we going to be wrong? Yes. 
Are our family and friends gonna be wrong from time to time? Yeah, probably more than us, I guess. But we're called to be gentle with each other, to walk with each other even in our disagreements, and when all else fails, to meet at the foot of the cross, because it's there at the cross that we receive the love and the grace that God has given to us. Amen. Hi, I'm Jerry Edis from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. This Thanksgiving, I'm most thankful for my family and friends and the love we share. today to tell you about the things that I'm thankful and grateful for. I'm grateful for all the people in my life that actually seem to want me in their life. People that give me strength and courage and love and support and have been there for me through a few challenging times that I've faced in the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years. There's always been people there for me, my, my family and friends, of course. I'm grateful for all the things that everyone's grateful for and my faith, but I am also extremely thankful to the Lord for blessing me in so many ways and giving me the courage and strength to handle those challenging times. And here I am, happy and grateful and thankful and enjoying this season of Thanksgiving. Hi, my name is Ann, and I'm a med member at Advent Lutheran Church in Cedarburg, and I am thankful for my family, my health, and my many abundant blessings. A reading from James. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, 
I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they're like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think that they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Have you ever said or thought or heard someone say the words, look what you made me do? Although they're often associated with children, adults are just as vulnerable to their influence. It's always tempting to blame someone else instead of taking responsibility for your own actions. When we decided to reflect on the fruits of the Spirit for our shared Thanksgiving worship, my assignment of self-control got me thinking. While it would be easy to joke about overindulgence at the Thanksgiving meal, I wondered about the relationship of self-control to a daily practice of gratitude. And I turned to that passage that we heard from the letter of James. It distinguishes between God's generosity expressed through your actions and the endless disappointing pursuit of personal desires. James's insight that God doesn't tempt anyone, but that this comes from within us, is helpful. Redirecting attention away from endless blame and suggesting the transformative possibility of contentment with what God provides each day. Where personal desire leads ultimately to death, God's generosity gives birth to a new creation marked by freedom and blessing. It begets generosity in you that God uses to bless others. Each day holds the opportunity to discern which power 
is working in you. And also the invitation to receive and to practice with gratitude God's generous gift of love. That self-control is a fruit of the Spirit suggests that this isn't about joyless personal denial, but rather the discovery of God alive in you. That this could be an expression of thanksgiving and gratitude opens an entirely new perspective, not renouncing, but appreciating and sharing the ways that God comes to you through the rich variety of our world and all who inhabit it. Seen this way, self-control is your means of sharing the abundance of God's great love, delighting in its expression and participating in its power. It is an offering of thanks to the God who calls you from death to life. Amen. I'm Eric Aspenson, member of Emmanuel, and I'm very thankful that all my families remain safe. Let us pray. God, whose giving knows no ending, you invite the whole world to your table of mercy. Hear us as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you give all people a place at the table. Nurture and encourage campus ministries, new congregations, and workplace chaplaincies. Support all parts of the church that meet people where they are and offer accompaniment through daily challenges and joys. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give nourishment to the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. Sustain all creatures who rely on the earth for sustenance. Water, parched grounds, dry, flooded fields. Temper heat waves and frosts and give sunlight and shade. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give wisdom to your people. Enlighten all leaders. Inspire and guide our presidents, our governor, our local leaders, and all who represent us in government. Give them patience and perspective to choose wisely for our common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give nourishment to those who hunger. Bring poverty and food insecurity to end. Give dignity and adequate employment to those who are unemployed and underemployed. Sustain us all at your welcoming banquet of love and justice. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you give community to those who are lonely. Be with our biological families, our chosen families, and our church family as we gather for the Thanksgiving holiday. Send your compassionate presence to those who are lonely, those who are separated or estranged from their families, and those whose loved ones have died. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you have a feast of endless thanksgiving. We are grateful for the saints gathered at your table who have gone before us. Unite us with them whenever we give thanks to you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, your welcome is wider than we can imagine. Receive our prayers for the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Amen.
Johnson from Grace Lutheran Church in Deansville. I am thankful for that I am playing drums uh, and I have uh, been blessed to play drums uh, for only a year, but uh, somehow, some way, and I know who it is that did this, has blessed me with that ability. So now I am giving that back to the church and to the public. So thank you and thank all and have a blessed Thanksgiving. Hi, my name is Joe Dore, and I'm a member at Faith Lutheran, and it's been a tough couple of years and sometimes hard to find things that I guess I'm really thankful for, but then it seems like God's creation comes to the rescue, and I'm using that in the broadest sense. Uh, sometimes it's natural things, or sometimes it's celestial things that make me thankful, but usually it's God's human creation, it's you. It's people that continue to keep me positive, to keep me upbeat, reminding me that God is going to be in charge and everything will come out according to his will. So I'm thankful for you. And now, ascending blessing. Harvest the fruit of the Spirit, freely given by God, and share it freely with others. Know that you are loved and forgiven. Trust that you are treasured now and always. Amen. Amen.